You remember last week that I was transferring the measurements from my body plan and my lines drawn over onto this table right here. I call this the loft table. I was also entering those measurements into a table of offsets. Now, I don't think there's been anything more boring than that to me or probably yourselves, but uh, now that that's over, we can get on to doing some work. And the next thing we're gonna do is start building the molds that we're gonna build the boat around. Now, these pieces are not parts of the boat itself, but it's a, a mold or a shape that I have to have to build the boat around. And it's gonna be built a little bit differently than a standard Swampskit dory because Swampskit dories were built around their own frames and this one's not gonna be built that way, but it'll be a similar shape. So uh, the next thing I wanna show you here is that I've already made one of the molds right here. Now this would be number three or the one in the very center of the boat amidships. And you can see it, it made to line up with this line right here. And I'm gonna show you that it does. All I have to do is move it into position here, and you can see that it's a, it's, a, it's a copy of that set of lines that's on the table. Now, I also drew both sides of the boat on the table so that I could copy it like this. I didn't do it from one side. There's probably 50 different ways of transferring the lines from this table onto this mold right here. But uh, I've got my own method, and uh, I think the next thing I'd like to do is show you how I do it. So like I said, now we're out to build section number two, and that lines up with this line right here. This is the bottom line of it right here. That's the very inside of the boat, and you can see it right here and going up the other side. Now the only thing there is here, there's a deduction from this one, an inch and an eighth, so I'm only gonna build the mold down to this line right here. And I'm gonna to explain to you why I'm doing that a little bit later, but it's to bind the bottom of the boat together with a false bottom, so we'll get into that a little bit later, like I said, but this is the first piece we've gotta do. The first thing we have to do is lift the bevel on the bottom of it, because section number three had no bevel at all. It was a midships in the boat, no bevel. This particular section has a bevel, and I'm gonna show you how we lift it. Now this is the section that I'm trying to lift the bevel on right here, section number two, and I'm gonna take the distance between section number two and section number one on my body plan and transfer that over to my bevel boarding system over here, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get the distance between section number two and section number three, and then I'm gonna transfer that onto this side of my bevel board system. Now, I'm just gonna transfer the measurement with my pair of dividers, and then I'm just gonna darken that right up with a little pencil line so I don't lose it. Now, we're gonna take a straight edge, or a flexible straight edge, and we're gonna put it between these three marks. So, I am gonna use a weight on one end just to kinda keep it tame right there. And I've got it on my center mark. I've got that one on that mark where it belongs. Now I'm gonna draw a little line in the middle right here, like so. Now the only other thing I wanna do is just extend my center line just a little bit further here. So this right here now is the angle on the bottom of frame number two. And you can tell that I've done it with the bevel board system. This right here is the baseline of the bevel board system, and this is the angle that I drew. Now, this line extends out 28 inches to the vertical line on this end and the other end. Those are the frame spacing between the frames that I'm putting in the boat, between these sections. So I've got all the information I need right here, and all I need to do now is pick it up in degrees, and I've got a little protractor I'm gonna use a pencil to find the center right there. It's a little tricky to find. I'm gonna put this line on the baseline and then swing my little thing up to that line. And what I get is three degrees. So I'm gonna mark it right here, three degrees. This is the angle that I need to rip on the bottom of that piece right there. Joe and I are continuing on now with the bevel board system, lifting the bevels on frame number two all the way to the head. And uh, the other thing I would like to say to you is, is that the bevels don't appear in any of these drawings, any of the longitudinal drawings or in this body plan, those bevels do not appear. You have to use this bevel board system to lift those bevels. All right, now what I'm gonna do is set my little lever here on my 
I've got nine degrees. I'm prepping up the first piece for section number two right now on the jointer. And uh, the first thing I want to do is get it nice and straight and true and get that rounded edge off it because it's just a piece of lumberyard stock, a piece of framing stock. I just want to get one edge of it nice and straight and I want to get all that lumberyard rounded edge off there so when I fit things together it'll look really nice. Now here's our piece right here and I've also taken it into the other room and I ripped it five inches wide, three degrees on the bottom. That's the angle that we lifted off of section number two with our bevel board system. So I just wanted to get it on there right away rather than having to dub it on there afterwards. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is put it on top of these lines right here. This darkened line right here is section number two on this side. This is section number two on this side. This is where I'm gonna put the bottom edge of it. It's got a little deduction from the bottom like I had said before, and we're gonna go into that a little bit later. Really what I wanna do is just kinda of position it over the line right now just to see what it looks like and see what I'm gonna cut off of it and things like that. So I've got it down pretty much where it belongs right there and on center and I can see it over top of my lines now. The next thing for me to do is to transfer the lines from the board onto the back of this piece. And like I said, I don't know how many methods there are for this, but I've got one that I use and it works really well, so I'm gonna show you how I go about that. Now, there's our section right there, and this is how we go about it. What I'm doing now is taking some sheetrock nails, and uh, I use these sheetrock nails for a specific purpose. They have a real, real thin head, and I can drive the head into the plywood right here, and the head stays right on the line. So I take the wire of the nail 90 degrees to the line that I'm trying to uh, transfer and set the head right on the line, take a hammer and bang it right into the line and it just sticks right there. I'm going along here and I put two nails at the very, very top of where I want this piece to be and I'm going to hook that piece onto those two nails and then I've put two nails in each one of these lines that I want to transfer. So I've got four nails on these two lines at the very bottom representing the very ends of two different planks and now I'm going to pick the piece up and I'm going to hook it right on to those nails at the top very patiently without moving anything around like that. Then I'm just going to lay it right down on top of the other nails and when I get it there, now I can apply any kind of pressure that I want. I can either use a clamp or I can just lean on it and bang on it with a hammer or just about anything, but any kind of pressure will transfer the nail heads into this piece of wood and then I can pick it up and connect up the lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this nail head right down or this wire. I'm going to lean on it like this with my elbow and then I'm going to take a hammer and I'm going to just like that. Now I can pick that up and turn it over and you can see that I've got the impression of the nail heads on the very back of this piece of wood. It even picked up one nail right here. I've got them on the other end too, so what I'm gonna do is take a straight edge and I'm just gonna draw a line between these lines or between these points right here. That's exactly the same as it is on the board. And then I'm gonna copy down my degrees and go over to the bandsaw and cut it. So Joe, what we're gonna do here now is cut the ends of this piece off on the bandsaw here. I've got the table loosened up and this is controlling the bevel right here. So I'm gonna have you control the bevel. If I say 10 degrees, you hold it right there, and obviously nine and a half, nine, but you have to be very careful you don't jump past it because it's pretty easy to do that. So just hold it right on the number that I call out and everything will be fine. Okay. All right, Joe, we're on 10 degrees. Hold it right on 10. Nine and a half degrees. Nine degrees. Now I'm going to reset at eight degrees. Seven and three quarters. Seven and a half. Let's 
like that. And here's the piece right here. Now I'm just going to set it right down here and uh, move it into position sort of like that and that's where it fits. But in order to make it easier for us, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the nails and put them right back in these spots right here like this and uh, we'll pull it up against them. Now I'm going to actually put one all the way up here because it really will make it sit nice and still. So there we go just like that. I'm going to put two more in, one right here, and one at the top right here. Now we can pull our first piece right up against those nails. We'll put it on center line because we've marked that. Pull it right up against the nails. Look at that. Perfect fit. Let's look at the top nail holes. Yeah, nice. Just the way we wanted it right there. Now, I think the thing to do to really hold it still is to take a nice big clamp like this, clamp it right down to the bench because it's in position, but we want to hold it in position just like that. The clamp just does a great job. And what I'm doing here is spacing it up off the table at the top. Once I've got it sitting where I want it, I can reach right underneath there and draw a nice clean pencil line. Then I'll take it over to the bandsaw and cut that. I might have to fit it a little tiny bit, but once it fits on there just the way I want it, then I'll take it out of place and add the nails into the table right there. And then what I do is carry it right back and fit it right there where it belongs, but it's just hovering over those nails a little bit, and then I put a little pressure on it, pound on it a little bit, so I can just connect up the lines and take it back over to the bandsaw and cut it. And I lift the bevels and add the bevels to the cut. The largest side of it sits down against the table, and I can push it up against the nails and get it right in place, and then I'm able to just fasten it to the other piece with a few drywall nails, actually, large drywall nails. The other side is going to be done exactly the same way. I'm going to prop the top end of it up with a scrap piece, get it on the line right where it belongs, draw the bottom piece, cut it off just right and fit it, and make sure it's exactly the way I want it. And then I'm going to lift it up, put the sheetrock nails on the line, hold it down nice and tight. Same exact procedure as the other side. Once I've got that done, I transfer the bevels to it, cut it to bevel, check it out nice and careful, fasten it in position to the bottom, and once I've done that, I kind of tap the whole section up against the nail heads and fit it up really nice and tightly and make sure it fits everywhere. And then I just transfer the planking lines onto it because that's really important information to me that I'm not going to lose. The last step is to add a cross ball at the top. And once that's fastened into position, that binds the whole thing together. It'll also be used to line up with the other sections in the jig later on. I'm going to unclamp section number two from the bench here, and we're going to see how we did. Now, let me just put this clamp away, and I'm just going to stand it right up for you here. Now, it's up against the nails the way we built it, and look at that. There it is right there, section number two, at least the perimeter of it. Now, there's some information here I wanted to show you. Here's the bevels that we cut on each end. They are so accurate, it's unbelievable, but they might need a little the tiniest bit of tune-up, and I've sketched on the planking lines, actually, at every corner because I don't want to lose any of that information. This boat was designed on the planking lines, not like most boats designed on buttock lines or water lines, so that information is really important to us. We don't want to lose that. The other thing I wanted to show you is this line right here is actually an inch and an eighth short of the inside of the bottom of the boat. The inside is going to be right down about here. But the reason why I've cut it short like that is that the molds themselves, which is not part of the boat, is going to have a false bottom that's stretched over the top of all the molds. And uh, it's going to provide all kinds of different stuff for us. It's going to provide backing for fastenings in the corner over here. It's also going to stop the molds from moving in any respect this way or twisting or doing anything like that. And there's a few other real advantages to that, and that is that uh, we'll have the corner all backed up in here for numbers of different reasons. And uh, really, the next thing I want to show you uh, is uh, we're going to connect all of these molds together. I'm going to make the rest of them. Then we have to line them all up with each other properly, connect them all together, put the false bottom on it, and we'll have the molds that we need to build the boat.